During World War II, the M4 Sherman medium tank series proved to be an essential asset to Allied efforts in North Africa, Europe, and the Pacific theaters of war. The M4 proved to be reliable, relatively low cost, and easy to produce, that helped the Allies win the ground war, through sheer numbers. The first-generation Shermans retained various flaws from the M3 Grant medium tank line, on which it was mainly based, including narrow track links, and a vertical volute spring suspension system, or VVSS, that provided poor ground performance. The Sherman 75mm M3 short barrel cannon could deliver knockout punches against early war German Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks. Furthermore, the tank's slopped frontal armor proved effective at deflecting incoming German fire. However, the Sherman's combat prowess in a tank-on-tank -tank confrontation was harmed, as newer German tanks like the Panther and the Tiger emerged on the battlefield. The M4 design was put through numerous tests and programs to ensure that it remained a viable presence on the battlefield, especially against the latest generation of German tanks. As a result, the Sherman was constructed in numerous generations over the course of its service life. Even as the war raged on, efforts were made to improve the Sherman's capabilities, which resulted in the completion of the Horizontal Volute Suspension System, or HVSS, coupled with wider track links. The 76mm M1 high-velocity long-barrel cannon, introduced in 1944, was capable of penetrating a Tiger's armor from the front. The M4 Sherman was produced in several variants, and it was also the basis for a number of related vehicles. In addition, Shermans have been modified by several nations from modernization upgrades, to complete hull conversions for another task. Here are three of the top Sherman variants, considered by many as the best Sherman model, that saw combat in World War II. Long before the Normandy invasion in northern France was decided, American war strategists knew that the Germans would be prepared to fight a tough defensive campaign from the coast to Berlin. The Americans realized they'd require an assault tank that was superior in terms of armor protection and lethal armament compared to what was available at the time. The M26 Pershing was already in development, and it was hoped that the new heavy tank would be ready for combat by late 1944. However, things did not go as anticipated, and the M26 did not arrive in Europe until 1945. As a result, various interim options were considered. The US developers took the M4 medium tank, which it already had in large numbers, and began the process of up-armoring it, for the dedicated assault duty. The engine was kept the same Ford GAA series as in M4A3 variants, but the gearbox was changed to compensate for the greater weight of the armor. Of course, the extra armor reduced the operational speed of the base Sherman design, which had previously been a stately 30 miles per hour, but had now been reduced to 22 miles per hour. The vehicle weighed 42 tons in total, and the suspension was the standard VVSS system, found on other Shermans. The US government signed a contract in March 1944, that would bring 254 upgraded Shermans to life. The M4A3E2 was already being delivered to eagerly awaited American tank crews and commanders in Europe by late 1944. Its crews dubbed the new mount the Sherman Jumbo to reflect its increased enormous stature. Once in action, the Jumbo functioned brilliantly, prompting requests for them from both commanders and tank crews. Even American General George S. Patton was on the list of requests, but the demand was not met. The Jumbo 75mm main gun was eventually replaced with a more powerful 76mm caliber, completing its transformation from medium tank to renowned battle winner. During the Battle of the Bulge, 
The Sherman Jumbo was essential in reaching the pinned 101st paratroopers at Bastogne, Belgium. When it came to dealing with the well-armored German tanks, Allied tank operators were always at a disadvantage and had to rely on numbers and inventiveness to win. As a result, Allied tank personnel zeroed down on the German troops' flanks or rear for a near point-blank hit. The British and Americans were already considering an upgunned version of the M4 Sherman because the weapon system was readily accessible in large numbers, with a steady stream of models rolling off the assembly lines at an incredible pace. The British proposed installing their 76.2mm anti-tank cannon, commonly known as the 17-pounder into a Sherman, after learning that the Germans had been able to fit their anti-tank guns into existing Panther tanks since 1943. Because of its superior propellant and longer barrel, the 17-pounder was on par with German 75mm guns, and was already known to be a fantastic penetrator of known armor types. The British Army's early model Shermans and their turrets proved to be the ideal test bed for such a design, and the Firefly was quickly accepted into service. It was rapidly distributed to each tank group, which usually consisted of five tanks, with one being replaced with a single Firefly. The Firefly was developed in three variations, each distinguished by the Sherman chassis it was built on. Approximately, 2,000 Sherman Fireflies would be deployed. As more powerful munitions were available in the latter months of the war, the Firefly's destructive capability became more of a concern for German tank operators. Fireflies first appeared in the 1944 Normandy beach landings, and were eventually assigned to conventional tank battalions, despite the fact that they were originally intended to create their own tank units. The arrival of the Sherman Firefly was so decisive, that German anti-tank teams and tanks were given explicit orders to engage and destroy Fireflies as a top priority in any combat. Despite their seeming low manufacturing numbers, the Sherman Firefly would go on to become one of the most important Sherman tank variants of World War II. The addition of horizontal volute suspension system resulted in a heavier and broader tank product, but it improved the vehicle's operational ground pressure. The HVSS was first fitted to the M4A3 production model, resulting in the M4A3 E8 designations, nicknamed EZ8. The new vehicles also included a 76mm high-velocity main armament, welded hulls rather than cast, and Ford GAA engines. The Ford GAA was an 8-cylinder, liquid-cooled, gasoline-fueled engine that produced 450 horsepower at 2,600 rpm and had its roots as an aeroplane engine. And this was widely considered the best tank engine used by the M4 Sherman. Over the earlier Sherman models, the upgraded attributes enhanced firepower, armor protection, and performance. The wide track gave it exceptional mobility, and its main gun, when firing HVAP rounds, could defeat any German tank up to Tiger I. Production began in August 1944, and the variant was introduced in December of that year, seeing combat action during the Battle of the Bulge, and afterwards. During the month of August 1944, 2,617 Easy 8s were produced by the Detroit Tank Arsenal and the Fisher Tank Arsenal. While the M4 Sherman had flaws, such as its high profile, it was an extremely effective tool for the job that it was given. Backed up by tank destroyers and air support, US tank columns swept through Europe, destroying German defenses as they made their way to Berlin. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.